Long glass, no base uh, type of uh, tube, over. Well, I don't even know what that would be. I guess I could think of something weird like maybe a Helicrafter's uh, a Cyclone or the other crazy one. There's a Cyclone and what was the other one? Typhoon or something? Yeah, no, I was thinking of Yesu. Yesu made, um, well, I got one here. Let me see. Let, hold, let me reach my head around here. Uh, yeah, SR-101. I have a, a very good working sitting on my desk ready to go to somebody. Uh, FL-101. It's a multi-mode transmitter only. It's a very nice, really compact unit, and it works fine on all modes. Uh, I, I, but I want to part with it. Now that I got it restored and working nice, and all new caps, all new tubes, all new alignment, it's ready to go. It's really pretty. Uh, so I got to find a home for it. Uh, that's, that's the SR-101. And... So it's a one-on-one that's an only uh, transmitter. <laughs> that's what uh, that's the uh, that's what that is. I think that's got those tubes in it. I got. Let me look in the manual. I'll look in the manual when you talk, and I'll see what the manual says. I don't remember, but uh, I did have some of those tubes though that I spoke about. They're uh, they're uh, uh, oh my goodness. No, no, no sense guessing. I have to I have to find out what tube that is, and, and I'll share it with you if it's not tonight or another time. Um, so that, that's the story. But I have lots of goodies here. I got uh, another uh, SX-122 that I have to restore. And I've got um, uh, a Yesu dual uh, two 572s in it, uh, amp I've got, I've got to restore. And then I have a Heath kit. <coughs> this one is annoying to me. A Heath kit HA-14. It's a really compact little mobile uh, amplifier. Puts out uh, three or four hundred watts. <coughs> it also, excuse me, it also has a pair of 572s in it. But um, the problem with it is, it's they put the stupid six volt tubes in series to run on 12 volts, and if the filaments are absolutely perfectly the same resistance, then one gets brighter than the other. And so I've blown two of them because of that. So I uh, made at it. I'm going to put the tubes in parallel on six volts, and I have a transformer I got that I'm going to use. But now I got to externally uh, mount that in the chassis in order to feed those filaments. Then it's a good amplifier. It's a nice, really nice amplifier. Just a filament problem. And now I got lightning. I thought at first was an arc, uh, arc in the filament choke, the arcing in between, causing the trouble. But it wasn't. It's it was the, uh, the uh, in imbalance of the filaments of the two tubes. You probably have seen the people do that, but that's not the best thing in the world to do. I think uh, Clark said he's got lightning and he's uh, getting out of here. Well, I can hear it out in the distance, but it's not by me. Okay, well, good night, Clark, if your receiver's still on. And uh, nice to uh, talk to you tonight a little bit. And thanks for reminding me that this is your frequency each night, and I will try to show up more frequently. Very good. This is W7KDL. Yeah, I guess he pulled the plug pretty quickly. Well, I guess he's afraid of lightning. I so far I've never been hit, and I've got a lot of a lot of metal up in the air. So far, so good, and I've been in the same QTH since. Uh, 1979, yeah, and uh, bought it, and I kept adding to it all kinds of features, and then to the house, and uh, it's, it's worth a lot, but I'm never going to move unless they uh, pry me out of here. I really love this place. I get a lot of the antennas and just enough property. Yeah, I just use this one. I've got a couple of other ones up, but I don't generally use them. I did have a a G5 RV up there set up as a Marconi. You short out the end of the feed line and then drive it against the ground. And I used to use that for 160, but what I do now is I take this one and I, I float the ground side of the uh, coax connector with two SO239s just soldered in the middle and not connected on the ground side. And then I just drive the whole entire loop and uh, it works good on 160. Oh, well, I, I, I abandoned 160 essentially because it's just such a noisy band. And <clears throat> the, only, the only time I really liked it was when there was a 160 sideband or AM phone contest. 
to make as many contacts across around the country as you can. And they did very really well with it with an inverted V. Uh, no, no, no. Inverted L. And the inverted L, like, the base of it is 12 feet off the ground. Then I have a, a, a loading coil into the base of the wire. And it goes up about 25 feet. And then it turns right and then goes out horizontally as long as it needs to be to get um, the quarter wave residents uh, with it. And it's been very, very nice. And, and so it worked well. But I got so tired. I get on 160, nobody there. And then the contest shows up. And everybody and his uncle there. And you can hardly find a spot to drop your signal in. And I worked coast to coast with it. And it was really fun. But then uh, there's no contest. There's nobody there. I was just you got to end up with uh, just talking to one or two of your friends and make an appointment. So I, I've given up working 160 even though I can. Yeah, that's kind of been my experience with it too. And so I just uh, haven't been on there in probably about a year. Yeah, well, I do have um, three antennas that work on 40 meters. Um, the, this loop works very well on 80 and 40. And then I have um, an off center fed half wave on 40. And then I have a end fed um, random with a um, 9 to 1 transformer feeding it. And it's 107 feet long. And it works very good on 40 as well. But out of phase with the others, it's amazing. I got a rotary switch here where I can switch in any one of the three antennas for 80 and 40. <clears throat> and it's interesting that they're real, when someone's really strong on one, they're really weak on the other. And then when, and in time, there's a phase reversal going on. And then I switch uh, and I, to the one that gives me the strongest received signal. And by golly, the, it, the, the, where it was strong before, it's now weak. And where it was weak before, now strong. That's crazy. But the, all, all those three antennas, I'm on that switch. And I, and I utilize that when conditions are kind of uh, squishy. Yeah, I've got an off-center fed dipole that's, uh, I don't know, somebody gave to me. So I think it was like some ham that makes them and sells them on eBay. It's got like a giant plumbing ballon in the middle. And it works pretty good on 40, covers 6 through 40. Um, I don't notice it to work any better than the loop, though. Well, the loop is my favorite. I'm on it now. But uh, <clears throat> on 40 meters, it's... Um Amazing how I can switch from the loop to the off-center fed to the end fed zip and uh, get a, a better signal on one or, or, or the other uh, of the three of them. It uh, works very well. So when I'm on 40, I get the choices. And when I'm on 80, I'm just here on the loop. And uh, 160, I'm just on the uh, inverted L. And then on the high bands 20 through 6, I've got quads. I've got a separate quad on each band. Uh, 20 through 6 meters. That is a great antenna. It's at 47 feet to the center and uh, worked the world. I'm usually first in when it's a pileup. It works very well. I like quads a lot and I've had them since, uh, two, let me see, 1990, my first quad. And I've had quads ever since. Homebrew, all of them. Uh, I love to make and enjoy using quads. Have you ever used a quad? Uh, lately, uh, the people are doing very, very well with these crazy hex beams. They work better than they should work. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, I've never had a quad. Uh, when I was a kid, the neighbor, his uh, dad was a truck driver, and he had a quad that he made himself. And I don't, uh, he, I don't know if he was a ham or not, but he used it on 11 meters. And so he had this big PVC quad in his backyard. And he had a bunch of the, you know, tube hybrids from the 70s and stuff. Was it on 10 meters? Well, he was, uh, um, his, his son was showing me the radio stuff, and it was on 11 meters that he was showing me that he was like, oh, these radios, they can work on CB radio, they're illegal, and <laughs> you know how kids are. I mean, I think we were probably like, uh, you know, 11 or 12 years old or something at the time. Oh, okay. Don't know any better. Yeah. No, I, <clears throat> I don't think what was called then a plumber's delight. It was a two element all aluminum uh, director and driven element for 15 meters. And I only had it up at 12 feet. And that crazy antenna, I worked the whole blooming world with it and had reg chews with North Africa and <laughs> out in the Pacific. Uh, it, was, it was a wonderful antenna. Uh, but I, I couldn't get a quad up there at that time. 
<laughs> I was a teenager, and that, that was um, my dad's house, and I didn't want to abuse the privilege of putting antennas up. I hardly ever asked him if I could put one up. I just put it up and say, how do you like my new antenna? He said, oh, son, that's okay. You can, you can leave it up there. That's good. <laughs> he didn't know what they were for, how to use them, what they were for. He just was happy that I had a hobby that was uh, uh, teaching me many things in electronics and making me happy. So my dad was very, very good to me that way. But uh, everything I had, I had to make them or buy the parts and make whatever it was myself. I couldn't afford any package to brand new anything in electronics yet too soon i had a paper route first making a whole six bucks a week <clears throat> then i got work to work in the uh, local t the radio tv repair shop after school and on saturdays and that was good and i made better money and i was able to buy more parts and that was a very educational job the owner was very very nice to me and taught me a lot about electronics at that time and i was uh well, how old was i i was 15 and 16 when i worked for him Oh well, <clears throat> that's about it. I'm falling apart over here. That's was it 9/11, 9/11 bed numbers, but that's what time it is. Uh, back to you for anything else. There, uh, <clears throat> Brown KG7HVRW7KDL. W7WKDL KG7HVR. Yeah, I'm gonna get out of here too. I gotta go inside and see what the kids are up to, and uh, it's getting hot in here too because uh, the amplifier is cooking this damn place. <laughs> I'm in a 20 by 20 shop behind the house, so anyway, uh, don't be a stranger. Uh, I I don't always get on here at the same time those guys do, so sometimes they're they're signing and I'm getting on here. So usually a lot of times those guys they're out of here by well before nine o'clock, um, but uh, I, I usually get on here about 8:30. So um, we'll catch you later another time, and uh, sounds like we know a bunch of the same people too. That's for sure. Very good. Yeah, nice to talk to you tonight with your nice uh, steady signal coming in here. Uh, you know what I didn't ask you is where are you? What city are you in? Oh, I'm in Prescott Valley. Well, I just went through there. Prescott Valley. I've got uh, two families I know in Prescott Valley. <coughs> Not hams. Uh, you're the first team. I wrote you down now. i got Prescott Valley in there. So we got Sedona, Phoenix, Chandler, Prescott Valley. And we're, uh, let's see, that's Clark, you, Joe is in Sedona, <laughs> and Mike. Where's Mike? <laughs> well, Mike's down there uh, uh, near, I guess, like kind of like Phoenix Children's Hospital, not too far from there, right? No, that, that's off the 51 and Thomas, I think. Yeah, Phoenix Children's Hospital. My daughter is a, nurse, a registered nurse there. Phoenix, I want to write that, Children's Hospital. Uh, Okay. He's right over there. Oh, he's downtown. Very good. I wonder what he's running. I didn't get that yet. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's about it for tonight. I'm going to go uh, get something cool from my throat and uh, sit down, relax, and read a little while and probably hit, probably go to sleep about 10 or 10.30. 73. Well, it's been really nice meeting you and nice talking to you up there from Prescott Valley. Have a nice evening and uh, good DX to you too if you do do X and DXing. That's part of my love is uh, talking to people in foreign countries. So I don't like just a signal report and goodbye. Uh, I do like to react to you with them. <clears throat> Some don't and they, they just give you a report and a number and say goodbye. But um, <clears throat> I found a lot of fellows uh, in Australia and uh, Hawaii uh, and uh, well, I, I had a long talk with a guy in, in uh, let me see, where was that? That was uh, uh, Thailand, in Thailand about three days ago on 20 meters. We spoke for about 15 minutes by ourselves. Nobody busted in and bothered us. And it was very nice, and we were five, nine plus five each from Thailand. So that was one of the few times I've gotten into that area of the world. It went very nice. So anyway, that's, that's one of my fun things is uh, DXing. Okay, take care. Have a nice rest. Talk to you later, bro. And uh, I can get on. Uh, when I can, uh, somewhere between 7.30 and 8.30 uh, for me to start up. We'll see how it goes. Take care. W7KDL. All right, have a good night, and we'll catch you later. KG7HVR, QRT.